Hello, and welcome to my full-length demonstration of creating the portrait of the seagull using oil-based colored pencils and odorless mineral spirits on Bristol paper. This is a time-lapse version, just over a minute long. Take a look and see what you think. If you'd like to see more detail, just keep watching and you'll see the entire project. If you're enjoying the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my work, I'd like to see oh, a nice new subscription from you. Now, most of the work that I do is with pastels, but predominantly pan pastels, but I'm doing a lot of work with colored pencils as well. I'm really enjoying the medium, and I like mixing them with the pastels. So take a peek at the other work that I do and see what you think. Oh yes, did I mention I do all of my blending with paper blending stumps, not brushes. Okay, all done and now we're ready to move on to the actual full length demonstration. Remember, you get tired from watching, you just click that pause button. You can always come back to it. Just save it for later. These are all the materials that I used, and I'll show you which colors. Today's project is using an oil-based uh, colored pencil to draw this seagull. I'm going to be using mineral spirits as a major component. This is from U.S. Art Supply. It's an art mineral spirit. And uh, while working with mineral spirits and colored pencils, um, I'm going to put a piece of glycine underneath the picture. I'm, I'm using Bristol paper. This is Fabriano Bristol. It's 11 by 14, 145 pounds or 250 G. Um, and it's actually, it's just beautiful. It's also smooth. I like doing my colored pencils on smooth. I, um, well, I have used, I have made that beak a little bit larger, but yeah, okay. Uh, I've already drawn out my drawing. I have used a pistachio color to sort of a gray and drawn out my bird. I am using, these are from Art and Fly. I saw them advertised. They're an oil based pencil and um, just as, although they advertise them as oil pastel pencils, which is what drew me, but they're oil based pencils. And uh, Darwin Light Fast colored pencils are also oil based. But I wanted to try them and see how they work with the mineral spirits. They should actually work better with mineral spirits than the wax pencils. And But what I did was go online and look for people who had done washes or something along that line. What I ended up finding were there were a dozen years ago some videos advertising or using Gamsol odorless vinegar and... Um, stamps and uh, and their art stamps and what they would do is color in around the line of the black ink from a stamp and blend out and away and it wasn't exactly what I wanted but it was enough for me to see that I could what I could do and I will attach uh, those links I'll add those links to my description so you can see that it's put this aside 
So for working on the bird, just the feathers, I'm going to be using the pistachio and the steel and the charcoal and the pewter and possibly the indigo in shadow. For the sky, I'm going to be using the, the pewter, uh, I mean the blue, it's a called baby blue. And then for the beak and the eyes, I've got a melon and a dandelion and a butterscotch. Now, another thing that I learned on these YouTube videos of crafters, um, and I watch I watch a lot of crafters. I watch a lot of artists of various mediums um, where they disclose their hacks. They used to be called tips, now they're called hacks. I don't know when that term came into being, <laughs> but this is a hack that I picked up from a video about a dozen years ago, not now, but I just it's on YouTube still, and I will include I will include the links. Um, one of the one of the crafters used a sponge on a on a lid. This is a condiment container, and I just cover it up, and it's still white. There's and this is a cosmetic sponge. Both of them I picked up at Publix, which is a supermarket. If you're not familiar. there. And I'm going to be blending not with brushes, but this is what they use for blending in those crafting things. I'm not overly fond of the way the, the brush works with the pencil, but I tried the, uh, I tried working with the paper stumps, very pleased. Uh, they absorbed a lot more of, of the mineral spirits, which means, which means, you know, you'll use more of it up. Now to clean it, you'll see that it gets dirty, and I don't want the, I don't want it to get wet. I just rub it across this little sanding bar. When you buy, when you buy these, frequently when you buy the paper stumps, they come with these sanding bars. You can also use an emery board. You don't have to go too crazy. Buy a package of a hundred emery boards for ten dollars or something, and that'll be just fine. Now, I like to use the blending stumps for graphite pencils. But I don't like to sharp. I don't like to clean them with these things. If I find that they're carrying too much graphite, I rub them on a um, an eraser. But because we're making this stump wet with the mineral spirits, the crumbling paper has no effect. So I've cleaned off most of that. I've got a little on this side. I'm going to be using three sizes. Probably end up using mostly just one. And I'm just lightly brushing it away, picking up the excess color. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with the smaller one. This is a number two. I have a number three, and then I have this, which is a number five. That's a five. This is a number three. You can get them at anywhere. You can buy art supplies. It's rolled up paper. And I just want to clean this up. And yeah, paper crumbs come off. And it's no longer perfectly smooth. And if you see that your little stump isn't, isn't completely cleaned up and you have little, like a little piece of paper, just cut it with a scissor. And we don't need to be precious about it. Um, now, I am going to begin with the number three. But I'm not going to do it yet. I want to color in first. I'm going to cover back, cover up my sponge so it doesn't evaporate. I'm going to start with the pewter. No, I'm going to start with the pistachio because that's what I do with. And what I'm going to do is add in the shading very lightly. Now I think I've made the beak a little bit larger than it should be, but I don't care. It adds a little 
humor to my image. It adds a little something extra. You know, look at humans. Our noses aren't all the same size. I'm working in little circles. I'm not worried about coming in the directions of the feathers. I'm just working in little circles. Very light. And this is the first time that I'm doing a, a, a complete study this, with this. So. Now, I didn't come back. I need to bring my feathers a little bit closer because I brought my tummy out a little further than I wanted to. Okay. I didn't trace. I did. I worked freehand. And when I go freehand, I make mistakes. But I don't really care. If, if I was doing something where I needed to be precise, if I were doing a commission of a portrait and I wanted it to be precise, I would trace or I would grid. When I do a study, and I'm pretty sure I should be able to get it all on the paper, and that's what I do. Just doing long, oblong shapes here. Now, I may not use all of, and probably won't use all of the grays that I chose, but I want them there in case I need them. Just brushing this over very lightly. Push a little bit harder over here where I see a stronger shadow under the gray. So, you know, not only is this a study, it is practice of working with Lenore Spirits and Wild Pastels pencils, and a new set of pencils I've never used before. here.
Now I'm dipping the blending stump into the cosmetic pad. And I'm blending the pencil. I'm rubbing it up and trying to follow the directions that the feathers would be in in case I crease anything or make any lines. You can see the color is smoothing out. Following the shadows of the feathers that overlap the wing feathers. You can see where I've made it a little bit darker. Now I can build this up some more. Um, it doesn't have to stay right here, but I want to put in colors and then I can bring over white pencil at any time as well. Let me change the lighting. I think that's easier for you to see. I apologize. Um, so you can see the shadow moving up toward the edge. Now I'm going to be putting blue, not the entire background, but just against the um, against the bird to take away that line. And now that's the side. I'm going to come back over here with, where am I, pistachio, to work on the gray tones and the white feathers. I want them all to be consistent. 
This is actually a photograph that I'm, I took in a, I think this one was San, uh, was San Francisco on the beach. More, you know, I don't think this is a Florida. I didn't get very many good shots of um, lots and lots and lots and lots of seagulls when I was in San Francisco on Baker's Beach. But and then of course I live in Florida, so they're in every <laughs> they're essentially in every um, shopping center picking up food. And I'm making, bringing down the darkest part onto the white, so I'm bringing down the shadow. And from here, keeping it a little bit lighter. Pulling it out and bringing the lighter shade of gray onto the white. I'm going to bring in the other grays, the darker grays. I'm going to add the indigo, which is a blue-black, in the darker areas of the feather over here, and bring it up some, and we'll start with that. Now it looks purple, because it is purple, but I'm going to be blending the 
the charcoal over that. Just want to be able to have the extra color on the bird. I don't want it to just be shades of gray. And anyway, this is one of the ways you blend with colored pencils. Here's the charcoal. You can, I can see the um, indigo shining through the black. together, back and up to the edge of the feather. I'm going to use the tip of that blending stump to bring streaks of that shadow onto that white feather. That color is still on the blending stump, so I'm going to move it on to cast shadow of this white of these white feathers here, and build up a little more contrast. Okay. And I'm going to come back. I'll work on on the wing feathers last or not last, the eye and the beak and the legs last, but the wing feathers next. I want to finish off the tail feathers. And they are the darkest. I'm going to do with these the 
it's pressed much harder. And that burnishing when I'm pressing much harder. The benefit of using a vellum paper is that not as much of the white shows through the colored pencils, the texture of the paper, as does watercolor or sandy paper. Indigo back. When I find it, there it is. And back over here. And just bring that into these feathers as well. It'll blend out. Do the same. Here and add a little bit more here. Now, if I were using a brush, I'd be pressing hard with the brush and Whistling it around, squiggling it around to um, blend and burnish the pencil. It's, for me, I find it to be much easier to use the blending stone. And I would have liked using mineral spirits a lot more if I'd known about this method. I love YouTube. Um, I have two degrees in art. I have a degree in library science as well, but I have two degrees in art, and I took everything that I could take. I studied sculpture and ceramics, not great at those things. Well, it's okay at sculpture, but ceramics was like, wasn't a strength for me, and I found that disappointed. But um, softening that edge, there we go. And that's much darker, that's nicer, okay. Um, and now, in my old age, I'm just learning how to reuse the methods and materials and mediums that I used before and using them differently. It's a lot of fun and um, Experimenting is so much fun. Still, my my preferred medium is is pan pastels and pastel pencils. Um, but I love experimenting, trying studies with other materials. And I might, I always feel, I can, I, I have two ways to go on, on the issue of realism or painterly or methods or whatever. Um, I get a kick out of it if somebody looks at a piece that I did and it does a double take thinking at first it's a photograph. I don't do photorealism, um, but that, gives, that always gives me a kick. By the same token, when I use pan pastels, if I can manage to do the entire thing in just the entire painting in just the pan pastels and not use pen pencils at all, 
I feel as though I have achieved uh, a level of masterfulness or of mastering the medium. Um, the pan pastels are made to work with other medium and they're brilliant. And I've used them and gotten rid of them and used them and gotten rid of them and finally, and I, I've used regular pastels and do from time to time still, and use those as well um, for decades. But it's only since I'm using pan pastels that I feel that I'm really mastering the art of pastel. And I do have other videos. Most of my other videos are uh, demonstrations of paintings done with pan pastels and with, past with pastel pencils. But I have done some other things. Now, moving on to my next ola here. It's a little darker on this side. So I'm going to use the charcoal over here at the edge of the feathers. And I'm just... Now if I blend it out from here, it would move up to a very light um, gray and not what I'm aiming for, but I want to start with the darker edges. The area where the edge over. But the mineral spirits will blend those. Um, I'm really enjoying these pencils. They aren't like that, so if what you're doing is something for a um, a commission, you want to hang or a gift, and you want to be able to hang it on the wall for a hundred years, um, this is this is great. I um, they're a very smooth, creamy pencil, not unlike the Derwent Life Vest pencils. I have recently begun using colored pencils with pastels, but I prefer the pastel pencil. I like using the colored pencils on their own. don't feel it's dark enough, I'll just add more charcoal on top of it.
I shouldn't have my pencil rubbing, my hand rubbing against the paper, but I am. The issue with this is that I can be adding oils from my skin to the paper and making it difficult. But I am using, so Brain is saying, but I am using.
So I'm going to bring in indigo in this area. In the area where it's darkest. And I could use a dark blue, a Prussian blue, or something like that as well. But I like the indigo because it'll bounce or vibrate with the yellow that's in the beak, or that will be in the beak and the legs. And I enjoy that. And complementary colors make for a great dance. charcoal again. On top of the indigo. shadow over here. I'm blending the excess color on the stump into the wings and creating more detail. And let me blend in the shadow that I created. I had to make it a little bit darker here.
Okay, that's much better. This needs more shadow here. Okay, that's better. I prefer that. There's better texture. And I'm going to come back up around the face. Shadow is a little bit darker under the neck, and I'll be making that darker, but I want to work on the face more.
and drag these stray feathers from the bottom hairs using the blending stuff. Better detailing on the face and shadow. Okay. And we'll leave the rest of that alone for now. And I'm going to be working on and where's my charcoal? I'm going to put in a little pupil. This is a little off the trip in the end. Okay. And a little black one. And there's a bit of a shadow. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the beak. Dandelion and butterscotch. Start with the dandelion. I'm not going to add any of the mineral spirits to the eye. I simply burnished with the pencil. And once again, I will repeat, I find these pencils move beautifully and smoothly. over the yellow which will, will create a nice round shadow for me and the same at the bottom here Yeah, we're going to 
stop for now. I am back. Oh, I forgot to, I hope it, well, I'll put more oil in my left on caps. Check the clock and it was time for me to go to work. I've got a day job and a night job. <laughs> okay. This is coming along beautifully, and I'm going to get back to work on the face here. A little bit more. I want this to be a little bit darker here, and a little bit darker here. Overdid it. Can you lighten that up a bit? Okay, that's good. And there's my smaller pencil. Okay. I like all the detailing I've got on the face and the body. And the beak's coming along. I need a little more for the beak. Let me bring in the charcoal here. Okay, that's better. And the charcoal back again. This nostril, I want it to be darker. Bring back my. Oh, here I had a yellow pencil. There we go. This is the dandelion. I just want to bring it up here. Bring in some more. I'm not going to lighten this or spread it with um, any more mineral spirits. I'm burnishing with the pencil. And the same here. Show the highlight. Okay. That's very good. Now let me move down to the legs. I'm going to bring in the dandelion yellow first. birds, so they have webbed feet. They're not like hawks or sparrows or bluebirds.
It's working very nicely on the bristle. I haven't gotten to the part yet where I'm going to add the, the blue. Bring the indigo in over here. Straight down. Okay. And let's bring in charcoal. Create greater shadow. Excuse me. You just have to have a little bit of the yellow showing for people to believe that the legs are yellow. And you just have to have a little bit of the white showing to know that the bird is white and gray.
And the um, little spirits last a good amount of time within the uh, paper blending stumps. Okay, and I'll bring that yellow back. Burnish a bit with it in the highlighted places. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to cast a shadow on the ground underneath their tiny feet with the charcoal. Let me just move this in a little bit of a position for me to draw. So we have shadows on the sand. And I want to erase this a bit. Now let me just bring this down a bit. I'm not going to do the entire background in blue. Just areas behind and behind the head and neck and in front of the belly. Just just bits, just an indication that there's blue. And this is the baby blue.
Okay. I'm going to use the big winding. I'm going to bring my sand block here and wipe away the excess color and the excess black. And dampen that. Rub it on my paper over here. If I'm not happy enough with it, I'll use another one. I'm just wiping down and wiping down and wiping down. I'm going to use another one. I'm not particularly thrilled with how clean I don't think that is, so I want to use a, a clean block. And blend it in. Let it blend it out and away. And the same thing over here. here. So I have that background, light blue background, and maybe a little bit more over here. Just fill. Okay. So, using the Art and Fly oil-based colored pencils and blending stumps and mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits, I painted this lovely portrait of a seagull. I'm going to cover this up with my lid. This is, a, as I said earlier, it's a condiment lid. That's all. So that'll be that'll hold that moist. And it was a really brilliant idea. Um, you can also use uh, cotton balls at the bottom of a mayonnaise jar or a baby food jar or something. Um, it keeps it wet and sealed. And um, now what I, what I want to do is take a look at this now and look at using white pencils. I'm going to use, I'm going to start with the Darwin Life Fast White. Um, see if I like that. Just a little bit. Um, I'm 
just want to make it seem as though there's there are teeny tiny feathers in it. And I don't have to completely cover it. I just need to have touches here and there. Places where there are highlights that I want to get caught up. And if I don't think it's strong enough, I'll use my uh, Winsor Newton white ink. good. Shading is good. And oops, get a little erasure crumbs out of the way. Got a little bit of pencil on my hand and smeared it. Now, I think I need to come back over. Yeah. And I'm not going to burnish, and I'm not going to. Uh, use the alcohol on this. I'm just bringing in lines in the direction of the feathers. Not done until the fat lady sings, or until you think there's nothing else you can do. Knowing when to say stop is the hardest part.
Okay, that's much better. Oops, let me bring it back up. Here we go. Portrait of the Seagull is now complete. And I am going to sign that. I guess I'll sign that with my charcoal pencil. John Madison. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my work, please uh, click on the subscribe button and that little bell so it'll, you'll get messages when I have a new one. I try to put out a new video um, once a week. Sometimes it's a day or two late. Sometimes it's a day or two early. Once again, I thank you very much. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing uh, another way of applying mineral spirits to uh, your colored pencils.